Howdy folks, and welcome back to Rotten Reels Review, audio review, we are on number 21. Ah, uh, road trips. Can there be anything more enjoyable? Bad food, regular radio waves eviscerated by trees or mountain range, and everyone getting on each other's nerves? <laughs> so, pack your pup tent, grab your ghetto blaster, and let's party down like it's 1981. This is Camp Slaughter, a.k.a. Camp Days. Submitted for your approval. A juvenile bunch of Generation Y teenagers are making their way to a campground. A ground that has been called Hiawatha. A ground that just may invite you into the twi- uh, uh, Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. I was listening to Rod Serling earlier. Sorry about that. <clears throat> a group of teenage college kids are on a road trip only to take a wrong turn and get lost. And by wrong turn, I don't mean a trio of cannibalistic mutant killers are chasing after him and turning him into various beanbag chairs or anything of that nature. Vade, Eric McNither, of a lure teenage fight club, Goy and Long Time Gone, is driving his sister Angela, oop, that's scary already, Joanna Scholl of Camp Slaughter, to an appointment in Boston, and apparently friends Jen, Annika... McFall of He Wants to Find a Wife, Guardian Angel, He Wants to Find a Wife too. Thou Shall Not Be Covet. Oh, Thou Shall Not Covet. Mario, Matt Dallas of Kyle XY, The Indian, Beauty and the Briefcase, and Babysit Wanted are along for the ride. So one would conclude they have no jobs to go to, maybe some time off. Who can say? Shock and awe happens when our plucky 20-somethings run out of gas and have to head into the woods to look for assistance, only to walk into what looks like a scene right out of a slasher flick acted out right in front of them. Freaked out by the whole scenario, they choose to run back to the car, lock it up, and try to sleep. The next morning, there's no signs of struggle, no twigs broken, no blood, or even a hint that a murder was taking place there. As if it never happened. The kids stumble upon Camp Hiawatha, and a series of camp counselors offer to help, and my God! I have not seen so many cut-off shirts, headbands, and tube socks in ages. Yeah. Now, director Alex Pucci of Frat House, Massacre, Lurker, Survival, Camp, Road Hell, Violence of the Mind, and Indiscretion... Should have really pushed for some more gags other than reefer tokes and shorty short pan shots. Now you have a clever premise of this concept of they have literally walked into a riff of the space-time continuum and warped into a timeline they don't know jack shit about. But the dialogue doesn't take it where it should. A modern-day teen uh, don't even touch any base on the fact they have made this time warp other than making a few Friday the 13th references and then just ragging on their clothes and their hair. In 1981, it had some history, damn it. Raiders of the Lost Ark was one of the highest grossing films. Poland declared martial law. Ronald Reagan became president. The Iran, the Iran hostages were freed. Our first fucking space shuttle, Columbia, was launched. It wasn't all just Terry cloth, shorty shorts, vests, and jeans, goddammit. But I digress. Other than the visuals, the potential gags, or the pop culture jokes that could have been, were completely ignored. Writer Draven Gonzalez of Frat House Massacre, Violence of the Mind, and Indiscretion had plenty of ammo to work with, but no follow-through. So the dialogue is clunky, the characters are vapid, and you're just left banging your head against a brick wall thinking, I spent money on this? Now, what actually kind of stunned me, that stunned me, no, I don't think that quite susses it up. I was genuinely surprised to see absolutely no nudity in this at all. Because, you know, you tend to figure boobs, slasher films kind of went together like bacon and eggs. Now, this lack of substance led me to believe this was either artistic integrity or the actresses all had a no nudity clause on standby. The gore factor is on par with Friday the 13th and even a couple of sleepaway camps, but frankly, overall, it's not that horrendous. 
and you find yourself in familiar shoes, hoping the protagonists get whacked really soon. I mean, clearly the budget was not there for, like, top-of-the-line FX, so you could forgive them slightly, even though all they would have had to really have done is taken a chapter out of Tom Savini's book on the subject. I think the man has enough years under his belt for the subject, and then some. So, nice idea, poor delivery. Just to clarify, this is the 2005 release. I know there has been some confusion as they're all there's at least three other films that are all closely titled Camp Slaughter, so you can understand the confusion. Well, that's about all I got. And again, if you have any suggestions, uh, maybe there's a film, a TV series I could actually touch base on, which is always fun. Um, maybe you found a, a, I don't know, really obscure Spanish horror film I've never seen. Which, hey, that does happen. Feel free to hit me up in the comments. Feel free to catch me back on Run Reels Review on Facebook. Either way, you'll get a hold of me one way or the other. And uh, feel free to check me out on VidMe. This is where I'm going to be basically cloning this and sending this here too. Okay, take it easy and have a good one.